As these weeks go by, I find myself more and more desperate, feeling things I never believed were possible. Loneliness, thirst, hunger. I am somehow sustained, but I know that my time is running out before what remains ebbs away and he takes back control. But at the very least, you've always been there for me, Manny. No. No! Don't judge me! It was him or me! It was him or me! Huh? What? Wait, is... Is that? <laughs> for now. You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Okay, come on. Let's get you down to the observation room. This must be starting to feel like home to you. Don't worry. I'll try and get you out of here eventually. I'm just in here. Okay, are we through in the next room? Just relax and we'll get started in a moment. Now are you ready? Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. This is subject 12198623, new session entry. We have myself, Dr. Alexander, leading, and in the room we have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. Your mind, it's like a conscious black box. It can show you your memories. Look into it. needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. 
It's at 5610FM. You can't miss it. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. You have to face it, James. Finally. Six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He, he was a father, a husband. He was fine. No way he caused this. It's him, this Haitian guy. He's got something to hide.
something there. Okay, we have a 22-year-old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Amp charge full to 10 and give me 100 joules. Come on, 100 joules. Charging up full to 10. Come on. Clear. <coughs> no reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. 200 joules. Keep the amp charge to 10. Two hundred joules. Keep the charge at ten. Let's go. Clear. <coughs> okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. Come on, 360, hurry. We have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x ray right away. Where are we with that x ray? Let's get it going now, please. It looks like an intracerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on a drill, please. Drill, please. 
Mr. Asian, you've made excellent progress. You're doing great. We need you to stay calm and try to relax while we go through these next steps. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. But tomorrow you leave on a six month trip abroad with friends. Mom, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. The room is full of chatty strangers. Mostly friends of mom and dad. There is a door to the hall. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever. Only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main hall. Half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. There's way up although the party is firmly downstairs. As much as you'd love to, you promised you'd stay downstairs with the party. Hmm. Bon voyage, James. Finally not the family disappointment. Same as ever. Stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table, and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which sits proudly on the table although no one is eating it. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signaling you. She's too far away, and the room is too loud. You push through, apologizing over and over, to get to Jennifer. You hug, you're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks if you're enjoying the party. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway, and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. She speaks up over the den, asking you to get her a drink. You pour Jen a drink, and one for yourself too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for the big trip. You tell her yes. That you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not mess up so much. She's going to miss you. 
you are going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There's so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up. But first, a drink. You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. The room is full. There's a utility room and writing on the wall. Open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskeys. Central floor re Rex, a collector, although he does actually drink them too. There's a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take in the room around about you. There must be hundreds, no, thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room and back into the kitchen. That is one strong whiskey. You take another swig and give a thumbs up to Dad across the room. He nods and winks. He tells you he is proud of you and to go easy tonight. Early flight tomorrow. You go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through, and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jack, covered in blood. What? She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. I'm sorry. I don't understand. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Sorry, I don't understand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Uh. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. Let me talk to her. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him. Uh. 
You're standing in the hallway. Something has stopped you in your tracks. While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks if you can drive her home. You still feel out of sorts. Those words echo. Yeah, yeah, we can talk in the car. Go get your keys. Doors to the kitchen and living room lead from here, while stairs take can take you up. You're sure your keys are in the living room? The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on the chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mom is pouring a drink at the drinks cabinet. A coffee table, a drinks cabinet. One of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. I don't know what you are trying to use. Tears immediately start to appear in her eyes. My son, off to America. She gives you a hug. Keys in hand, you head back into the hall. Jen thanks you for helping her out. She has work in the morning, and no one else is in any fit state to drive. You can handle it, though. You know the road like the back of your hand, don't you? You open the front door and walk out into the freezing night. The cold air hits you. You are glad you have your jacket with you. There is a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house, and the car sits at the front of the house. You fumble with the car handle, confused until Jen tells you to maybe use the key in your hand. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car glove box and hands you a note and a key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power and lights on. Also, round some found something in the attic for you. It's in your room. Enjoy. Let's see. Both you and Jen have your seatbelts on and are both ready to go. It's time to go. You try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower, despite holding keys in your hand. It takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. You turn the key in the ignition, and the car roars to life.
more squeals, but stays stationary. Jen suggests releasing the brake, giving it a wide-eyed stare. You very hesitantly release the handbrake. the car in gear and pull out of the driveway like a first-time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You... I... am driving. Very drunk on the road towards the town where your sister stays. This isn't really something that I should be doing. But we need to restore your memory. We have to do things as they happened. Let's go, Mr. Ration. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. It shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confident that you're on the right road now, you loosen up and put your front down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine roars at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches your arm. She asks you to slow down. I went faster. Did not over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you. Crazy sis crazy sister. Strange. There's a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow. Like slow motion. You try to react. But your body isn't responding. There's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. The outside joins the inside. James, for fuck's the whole sake, world around you begins to scream. James! It was at this very moment, wasn't it, James? The moment you lost it all. Your sister. Her parents. Herself. And then you made it worse. Go on. Show us what you did. You wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity, trying to hold you in your seat. An impact into another car has torn a hole in the chassis. Poisonous fumes split into your car spill into your car from the engines. You are in grave danger. You have to get out of here. You release yourself from the seat belt. Gravity takes over as you slump onto the, the roof of the car. You squeeze through the wreckage and fail to fall to your knees on the ground next to your vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. A blue car is smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing and holding your attitude and your light dead as your dad's note and flashing lights are approaching at a distance.
crash site. Smoke billows from the crest, crashed cars to the sky. Uh, above, exterior lights flickering on and off. What car? The other blue car or yours? The door is jammed. You won't have time to be messing around like this, James. What is pouring it out here going to do, James? You still have the bottle. Approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail for this. You clean the bottle to remove your connection with the whiskey. You then very deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents on the driver, and you toss the incriminating evidence onto his passenger seat. circle of flashing lights surround you, illuminating the crest shift site in the darkness. Behind them, an array of people, all staring. One figure steps out a silhouette and walks towards you. As you approach the men and pulsating lights around you, you get a dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident, that poor man, me, you have to remember. It was all your fault. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that officer and wrecked all of our lives. And you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. Huh? Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. It has to end, James. Well, I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect it'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow.
looks like we got some closure. Who knew something like this was under here? Well, he probably did, but he wasn't expecting it to have so much ambient power. But unfortunately, this isn't the time to use it. I think I'll keep this trump card under my sleeve the next time he tries this. Oh yes, he won't even see it coming. <laughs> Next year will be different.